Hello my dear students. Today I am going to discuss another important topic of this unit uh, that is three dimensions of US hegemony. So when we talk about US hegemony, we discuss different events of US hegemony, how US try to maintain its dominance in our world politics uh, with different tactics, with different events, with different methods, we discuss about Gulf War, we discuss about Afghanistan War, Iraq War, Clinton years, all these uh, events, all these methods we discuss uh, about US hegemony. So, this, all these events, all these uh, methods used by USA can be categorized into three dimensions and these three dimensions are hegemony as hard power, hegemony as structural power, and hegemony as soft power. So today we are going to discuss the first dimension that is hegemony as hard power. Now we call hegemony as hard power but before we are going to understand we are going to uh, explain uh, how USA use hegemony as hard power we need to understand what is hard power, what is the meaning of hard power, what exactly hard power means. So hard power, hard means what? Hard means it is very forceful, okay. It's very hard, it's very, uh, you know, uh, 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 very tough, okay. So hard power ultimately it refers to the military power. It refers to the military dominance of US, okay. So when we call a uh, hard power in terms of hegemony, when we use hard power in case of hegemony or this kind of thing, then it basically refers to the military power or military dominance. So hard power here, it means the forceful power that is and from where the forceful power come, it comes from the military power of a country. So when a country's military power is strong, then that country will automatically can dominate over other countries. For example, we can uh, have, uh, we can give the example of the ancient uh, Greek, ancient uh, Greece, where uh, Athens, you know, we all know that ancient Greece has uh, had uh, small, small city states are there, like Athens, Sparta, all these uh, city states were there. So, among these uh, city states, Athens uh, is, uh, was considered one of the strongest city state. Why? Because Athens has a superior military power among all the, uh, these city states. So therefore, Athens is considered as a uh, dominant city state among all these uh, city state of ancient uh, Greece. So why? Because Athens has a superior military power. So that is the importance of hard power. So uh, that is the importance of military power. If any country's military power is, is very strong, then automatically other countries always afraid of them because uh, if that country is going to attack, uh, then automatically they have a advantage place. They have a uh, some kind of advantages due to their superior military power. So that's why hard power is very important. If you want to dominate over world politics, if you do want to dominate in uh, in the international relations, then you should have, you must have a superior, a strongest military power. So USA has that strongest military power. That's why USA can dominate over world politics. But how uh, we can say that USA has the strongest military power and or we, how USA actually use their military power to dominate over world politics. So let us discuss about the USA hard power that also ultimately USA military power. So how USA use its military power, how USA actually uh, make a strongest military power to dominate over world politics. So uh, let us uh, discuss this. So, USA has always a strongest military power. Uh, when we compare the military power of uh, 
other states uh, which USA, then USA is always as the upper hand regarding this military power. So USA is always the strongest military power, strongest military base. And there are various reasons for that. Okay, it is not like that USA, you know, uh, just uh, simply USA has a strongest military power or we can just simply say that USA has a strongest military power, but it is very uh, logical thing and it is very uh, usual thing that USA has a strongest military power because there are various factors are there, various reasons are there that why USA has a strongest military power. Now, if you uh, if you uh, want to uh, analyze that how much strong a uh, USA military, then I can say that USA military military can land hard troops in few minutes or less than an hour in any parts of the world. So if USA wants, they can send her troops and land her troops to any country, any part of the world in less than one hour. Okay, so it took only less than one hour and they can land her troops in any part of the world. That's why USA can operate different kind of operation in different parts of the world. We can have different examples are there. And therefore, USA also has a worldwide presence of their military. So USA never afraid to uh, uh, you know, conduct operation in any part of the world. We can see the various examples of Gulf War. So in the Gulf War, USA uh, operates uh, in the in, uh, Gulf countries and in the in the Kuwait and then uh, if you see the in the Clinton years USA interfere in the matter of the Yugoslavia and attack on Yugoslavia then in Afghanistan war USA attack on Afghanistan in the Iraq war USA attack on Iraq okay so ultimately USA can attack can send her troops in any part of the world so therefore USA military has a worldwide presence and such a strong military power that it's it takes no time ultimately very less time few minutes or less than one hour to land any part of the world so that is the uh, superiority of USA military power and I, I can have also give uh, an example like uh, you, you can have the example of uh, the um, uh, operation where Osama bin Laden the chief of Al Qaeda was uh, was killed so in that operation, Osama bin Laden was uh, he was hidden in uh, Pakistan because during the Afghanistan war, the main target was Osama bin Laden. But uh, he somehow escaped from that uh, the base of Afghanistan, and uh, from in many years he actually escaped from uh, USA. But ultimately, USA detect him in Pakistan and secretly they operate to uh, oper or they they they. Uh, launch an operation to kill Osama bin Laden and secretly they moved to Pakistan and kill Osama bin Laden. Pakistani radar could not detect the movement of US helicopter that how US helicopter went to Pakistan, how they uh, landed in that building where Osama bin Laden was uh, live and then just they just went and killed Osama bin Laden. So Pakistani radar, Pakistani army, Pakistani intelligence, they could not even any clue that USA can did this kind of things okay so therefore in from this incident we can just realize we can realize that how much powerful is the uh, US military okay it's it's just one example there are lots of example where US military always show their superiority okay now why USA military is so much strongest so it's also depends on the how much money you is spend on your military okay it is also a very important thing so if you look out to the u.s defense spending it is very large yes it is very large and if you compare to the other countries defense spending then you know other countries is nowhere in compared to usa so the defense spending of USA comes to nearly 36% of the defense spending of the world as a whole. That means the whole world, uh, if you, uh, if you uh, make a total of the defense spend spending of the whole world as a whole, 
ओके एज ए होल यू मेक ए टोटल ऑफ डिफेंस स्पेंडिंग ऑफ द होल वर्ल्ड ईच एंड एवरी कंट्रीज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड देन इन दिस एज ए होल स्पेंडिंग यूएसए डिफेंस स्पेंडिंग कम्स टू नियरली थार्टी सिक्स परसेंट डेट मीन्स थार्टी सिक्स परसेंट स्पेंडिंग कम्स फ्रॉम द यूएसए दे स्पेंड दिस थार्टी सिक्स परसेंट ऑफ अमाउंट ऑफ दिस इंटायर डिफेंस स्पेंडिंग ऑफ द वर्ल्ड सो फ्रॉम दैट फ्रॉम दिस सम यू कैन रियलाइज हाउ मच मनी स्पेंड बाई यू एस ए ऑन इट्स मिलिट्री ऑन इट्स आर्मी यू कैन हैव सम डाटा देयर लाइक इन द ईयर टू थाउजेंड थ्री हंड्रेड बिलियन डॉलर्स स्पेंड बाई यू एस ए ऑन इट्स मिलिट्री थ्री हंड्रेड बिलियन डॉलर्स ओके एंड इफ यू कम्पेयर टू अदर कंट्रीज सपोज नेटो कंट्रीज नेटो कंट्रीज मीन्स ट्वेल्व अदर कंट्रीज सो कम्बिनेश कम्बाइन अमाउंट ऑफ ट्वेल्व नेटो कंट्रीज ड्यूरिंग द ईयर टू थाउजेंड दे मीन्स कम्बाइन डिफेंस स्पेंडिंग ऑफ ट्वेल्व नेटो कंट्रीज इन द ईयर टू थाउजेंड दैट वॉज वन सिक्सटी बिलियन डॉलर्स एंड इफ यू सी द डिफेंस स्पेंडिंग ऑफ रशिया इन दैट ईयर दैट वॉज सिक्सटी बिलियन डॉलर्स एंड यू एस ए है थ्री हंड्रेड बिलियन डॉलर्स सो अल्टीमेटली यू एस ए हेज मोर डिफेंस स्पेंडिंग मोर देन आदर टुएल्व कंट्रीज टोटल अमाउंट ऑफ डिफेंस स्पेंडिंग ऑफ आदर टुएल्व कंट्रीज सो यू एस ए हेज मोर डिफेंस स्पेंडिंग then the other 12 countries total amount of other 12 countries okay and even if you include russia then the, 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 the russia only has 60 billion dollars but us has 300 billion dollars in the year 2000 and it gradually increases day by day and if you see in the, in the year 2004 us has spent almost 455.9 billion dollars okay so you just you know real uh, you just can imagine you just can realize that how much money put by usa on his uh, defense force his military uh, uh, force okay so that is the defense spending of usa and that's why it is one of the main reason why usa military is so much strong okay now another point is that usa military is uh absolute strongest absolute has absolute dominance as well as also has relative dominance now absolute dominance means what they can go anywhere any part of the world they can attack any country any part of the world they can land in any country any part of the world in a very few minutes or less than one hour i already mentioned they can uh, operate operation in different countries just like gulf war they uh, attack on uh, iraq in the iraq war they attack or in iraq in the land of iraq then in afghanistan war yugoslavia war all these uh, we incidents are events are there where usa attack different countries different location different for different enemies are there okay so usa has that power has that capability so that is called the absolute dominance of us military and then the relative relative dominance relative relative dominance means if you compare to the us military power military dominance military superiority uh to the other countries like other developed strongest countries like china russia then us is always as a upper hand okay so it is that it is can be called as relative dominance so us military has absolute dominance as well as relative dominance and then us has advanced technology us always use advanced technology for its military uh there is a interesting uh uh incident i like to share with you that suppose uh, for example we use internet nowadays internet is a one of kind of a basic uh, facilities we have and one of the basic needs we have so we are now familiar with the use of internet okay but uh internet in usa firstly when internet was uh, invented okay they firstly use it for its military for its army okay so basically internet was invented in usa for the military purpose for the defense purpose okay 
not for the general public but for the defense purpose so from this incident we can realize that how much usa is serious about the technological advancement of their military so they invented such equipment such technology which can help their military their army to become the strongest army of the world because uh, only soldiers only arms cannot make a army strongest okay you need advanced technology you need advanced equipment from that an army a military can be strongest so usa always have emphasized always is focus on the technological advancement and if you compare to the other countries there's a huge technological gap between us and other countries if you compare to any developed countries like china or russia any england any other developed countries forget about the third world countries if you compare to any developed countries usa has a technological advancement so there's a huge technological gap between us and other countries so therefore usa always use its military power to dominance over world politics as i already mentioned the military power so it is refers as hard power so it is hard power or military power is very necessary for dominance for hegemony because if you have a strongest military then of course other countries always afraid to you you know you has a you has always a upper hand so some if some states are you know uh, like uh, is a kind of a enemy or kind of a opposition to you so if you want to dominate over the states you should have the strongest military power for example iraq and saddam hussein saddam hussein is always regarded as the enemy of usa so saddam hussein never you know comes to a negotiation with usa so saddam hussein always you know treated usa is like an enemy so usa they cannot politically uh, or diplomatically uh, negotiate with saddam hussein so they can use the force they can use the hard power they can use the military power so military power comes into the play when there is no diplomatical process political process discussion uh, 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 was going to work uh, so when discussion when diplomacy when political talk were not in the in in the consideration then uh, your military power is come to the scenario so you can use your military power to gain something if you cannot gain with your political talk if you cannot gain this with your diplomatic talk if you cannot gain with your with some kind of negotiation then you can use military power so therefore you should have the strongest military power so usa has that strongest military power therefore in the matters where where negotiation political talks are not in the consideration usa gain that uh, they are uh, whatever they needs gain through by using the military power okay so uh, this is all about usa hegemony as hard power in the next class we are going to discuss about structural power so children thank you and goodbye